Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a book haul. So I don't very often do book hauls on my channel just because I don't often buy books. But as you're going to see, I've already acquired quite a few books this year and I thought it'd just be really fun to chat about them all with you. And I'm kind of hoping to make this like a regular thing, like every few months having a little haul. But it depends if I keep buying books and receiving books because some of these are gifts or from publishers as well. Um, but yeah, it just depends. So in this video, I'm only going to be talking about the physical books I've received, though I have bought some ebooks and I've received quite a few digital arcs. Unfortunately, I've just not got time to talk about both. It'd be doubling the length of the video. It's just too much. However, I am planning on putting up some reels on Instagram talking about some of my upcoming arcs. But yes, without further ado, let's just get started. So I've divided my books into three piles. We've got the ones I bought, ones I received as a gift, and ones I received from publishers. So first up we've got A Curse of Roses by Diana Pingicha. So this came out just on Hogmanay on the 31st of December last year in the UK, though I received my pre-order this year, it's a couple of days late. And I'm very, very excited to read this. This is a historical fantasy, it's based around Portuguese legend, and it sounds so cool. It's sapphic. You follow a main character called Isabel and she is cursed. She turns food to flowers. And this is particularly unhelpful as her country is currently in a famine. And so she seeks out a woman called Fatian to help. And in order to help her, Fatian must be released from magical binds, which will take the power of a kiss. So this kiss sets them on this journey of yearning and magic and solving all these problems but it's a bit complicated because Isabel is actually betrothed to the King of Portugal. And I'm just so, so, so excited to read this. It sounds so good. Next up, I decided I would treat myself to start off the new year right. And because I'd been on a book buying ban for quite a while, so I put in an Amazon order for these four books. So first up is Anana et l'Enfant Vampire by Cordelia. So this is a French book, it's middle grade, and it just sounds the absolute cutest. It's called Alana and the Vampire Kid in English. And it's about a daughter of some vampire hunters and she's convinced that a kid in her class is a vampire and she wants to prove herself as a vampire hunter to her parents by going after him when they don't believe her. And so this sets her on this wee journey and oh, it sounds so, so cute. I'm so excited to read it. It's just a wee story of friendship and family love and all of that. And it sounds adorable. I'm so excited. Cordelia is a non-binary French author and I've been really, really wanting to read some of their work. So I'm just very, very excited to pick this one up. Next up, I got Gemna and Obsidio, which are the sequels to Illuminae and by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman. So at the end of last year I read Illuminae and then earlier this year I read Gemina and I've been really really enjoying the series. If you've not already heard it's a sci-fi series, it's told through this really fun multimedia format and you follow two different characters in Illuminae and another two in Gemina and they're just in some bad situations and lots of things are going wrong. It's set in space, they're on a ship and you know the, the AI is out of control, the, sh the ship gets attacked in this one, there's lots and lots of drama going on, it's a lot of fun really, I've been really enjoying this read and I'm very excited to read Obsidio. And finally from that order I actually got The Hen of Wars by Deepa J. Gardar. I've been saying for months I want to read this book and the paperback came out in the UK so I thought yeah it's time, it's time that we buy it and I'm so excited to dive into it. I was hoping to read it in February for FF February but I just wasn't in the best reading mood and I never got around to it but definitely hoping to pick it up sometime soon. So if you don't already know this is a YA sapphic rom-com and you follow two girls with the rival henna businesses and got some rival to lovers going on it sounds so good. Lots of discussions of culture and celebration of culture, cultural appropriation, all of that all sounds so good, so excited, heard amazing, amazing, amazing reviews. So just cannot wait to read it. It's gonna be so good. I'm gonna love it so much. I will refuse to accept any other outcome. I'm a bit scared to read it in case I don't like it, but I'm gonna like it. I can't see any reason why I wouldn't. And the final book I bought for myself over the past couple of months is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. 
So this is another book that came out last year and has received an awful lot of hype. It seems to be really, really well received and I'm very, very excited to just pick it up. I am a bit intimidated though because it's fantasy and it's got very, very little writing. I'm just looking at it now and it's minuscule. So this is the first book in a YA fantasy series. It's an Arthurian retelling and it's got a kind of academic setting which I'm really intrigued by. I cannot wait to see how that's portrayed because I've been I've been feeling the academic setting. It sounds fun. And yes, I'm just beyond excited. Heard such a, such amazing things and I just hope I'm going to be in a proper fantasy mood soon. I can feel it coming and then definitely going to pick this one up. Next up are the books I received as gifts or from giveaway wins. So first up was a pre-order of Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrian Tooley. So I won this in a giveaway quite a few months ago now from the author Alexandra Overy who wrote These Feathered Flames which is a YA uh, sapphic fantasy book that comes out later this year and I won another YA sapphic fantasy book that's out now. It came out at the comes out at the beginning of March but for some reason I received this like two weeks early. No complaints there though. <laughs> so this is a standalone fantasy and is very witchy and from what I can tell quite emotional as well which I'm very intrigued by. You've got some enemies to lovers, sunshine grump, all of that. So excited. So you're following two main characters. You've got Tamsin who was the most powerful witch of her generation but when she commits a crime she's cursed with the inability to love. And you also follow Ren who is a source. This means that she's like made of magic even if she can't actually use it herself and sources are always taken in by covens because they're just perfect for training witches. But Ren has been hiding her whole life because she has to take care of her ailing father. And as his condition worsens, she has to seek out Tamsin's help and they make a bargain because Ren's status as a source means that she's really, really useful for Tamsin because of her inability to love and it's, it's all gonna work out so well. Oh, I kinda match. <laughs> And oh, I'm just so, so excited for these sapphics. It sounds so good. And oh, the cover, the cover is so pretty. And look at the back, it's got a little hoose. I love it. Yes, I spent a good while just admiring this for it after I received it. Like I just carried it around for hours. So I could just be like, wow, it's really pretty. Because, oh, so, so gorgeous. <laughs> Next up, I also went on a giveaway, Dangerous Remedy by Kat Dunn. So this was a giveaway run by the author as to kind of celebrate the release of the paperback edition. And I won and I'm very, very excited. This is a historical fantasy. It's queer. It takes place at the time of the French Revolution, which I'm very, very excited about because you know me, I, I like France. <laughs> I find French culture and history and all of that very, very interesting because that's my degree and I'm so excited to see what it's like in this book. And yes, I think this has got a kind of heist element, it's got found family and lots of queer characters, lots of magic, and I'm just very very excited to read it. I know the sequel's out soon as well, so it's just the absolute perfect time. Oh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm so excited. And of course, because I received it from the author, it's signed! It says heads will roll. I love it. So pretty. Love it. So 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 excited to read it. Next up I won another giveaway. I swear I don't normally win giveaways. I don't know what happened but I won two giveaways on the same day for Dangerous Remedy and for these. So this was a giveaway hosted by my friend Lewis from Lewis Likes Books and yeah he just went through my Amazon wishlist and bought me a couple books and I'm very very excited. So first up is Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So this is the author of Mexican Gothic, which I read last year and really, really enjoyed and I'm very excited to read more from her. So this follows a main character called Cassiopeia and it takes place in the Jazz Age in Mexico and she makes a deal with the Mayan god of death, which takes her on an adventure across Mexico and also into the underworld. And I am so excited. It sounds like it's going to be so fun and I'm so excited to see more of Mexico in a book because, again, my degree. <laughs> I study French and Spanish and Latin American studies for anyone that doesn't know which means that <laughs> I just get very very excited for things like this and I'm so 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 excited for this one. It sounds amazing. I've heard good things. Yes! Just so excited to pick it up. Next up we've got The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So this is the author of One of Us is Lying which I really really enjoyed. 
and I'm excited to read another thriller from her. So this follows three cousins who receive a mysterious invite to all meet at their grandmother's house and she's kind of been an, enig an enigma in their life. She's quite mysterious, they don't know a lot about her and they start uncovering some family secrets and things and I'm very intrigued by this. I've heard some good reviews so far. It didn't release that long ago and I'm just very excited to pick it up. <laughs> Hopefully it's gonna be amazing. I did love One of Us Was Lying when I read it though I did not enjoy One of Us Was Next, the kind of sequel to it, so I am a bit iffy on whether I'll like it or not but I have high hopes. And finally from Lewis I also got Late to the Party by Kelly Quinlan and I am so excited. I have been dying to read from Kelly Quinlan and I now have Late to the Party and an arc of her new book which is She Drives Me Crazy. So excited to finally read from her. So this follows a main character called Cody and she's a bit of an outsider, a bit of a wallflower but when she's convinced to go to a high school party she ends up meeting Ricky and Ricky is gay and she finds him kissing another boy and this kind of starts a friendship between the two as they are both gay and maybe not in the best setting for that uh, from what I can tell and Ricky really just takes her under his wing for the summer of fun and love and lots of just fun teenager things and I'm so excited to read it I've heard such praise for Kelly Quinlan's books and I'm so 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 excited to read it and I think I'm gonna relate quite a bit to Corey so I'm also excited to read that even if I'm a bit scared of possible emotional impact I'm just very excited and thank you once again to Lewis for getting me these three I am very very grateful and then the final book I received as a gift was Heavy Vinyl Volume 2 Y2KO which came from my friend. She just snooped through my Amazon wishlist and got me this just because and I love her so much. Not because she got me this but just in general. And yes, so I read Heavy Vinyl at the beginning of February and it is available on Scribbit but the sequel isn't so I was gonna need to buy it but I'm very iffy about buying things so it just it was perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. I read it, I loved it. This is a graphic novel I think there's only two of them. There's like a kind of hint for a third one at the end of this but so far there's only two and it takes place in the 90s. You've got this lovely retro setting. You follow the main character called Chris who's a big old lesbian and she works at a record store and has a crush on her co-worker and just this lovely girl power girl gang thing going on. Especially she discovers that there's a kind of fight club going on here with employees at the store kind of smashing the patriarchy and protecting women and I love it a lot. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous art. Love the story as well, love the characters. So 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 fun. Highly recommend them. And then next up we've got a couple of review copies I've received. So first up is A Dark and Hollow Star by Ashley Shuttleworth. I've spoken about this quite a bit recently because it's become a complete new favourite. Love it so much. If you've not seen me talk about it yet this is an urban fantasy following four queer teenagers and they have to kind of team up and solve some murder. In this urban fantasy world you're exploring this magical underworld of the fairy courts and I love this so much. I love how the world building was done, it was amazing and I just love our characters. You've got two sapphic characters, two Achillean characters, so you've got lots of queer romances going on, lots of fun dynamics. I will link for my ARC reviews down below so if you want to check them out go ahead and I'll have good links for everything else but oh this is amazing can't recommend it enough this is going to be the next big thing I have a feeling and I really just recommend you pick it up. Next up I received an ARC of The Girls I've Been by Tess Sharp so I got this physical copy through Pride Book Tour so I was part of their bookstagram tour. This is a sapphic thriller that I spoke about in my January wrap up I believe and it's a whole lot of fun. So this follows a main character called Nora and she ends up part of a bank heist but her past as a con artist has really just well equipped her for dealing with this situation and being able to save herself and her friends and you follow an almost dual timeline of the heist and reflecting on her past and these different girls she has had to become as part of her mother's cons and how different aspects of their character have helped make her who she is and will help her get her out of the situation. And I loved this so much, it was so good, amazing. And I just loved, well, you've got a main sapphic relationship, Nora's by. I love 
this look at trauma and recovery and all of that and oh so much about this is just amazing loved it an awful lot I really really want to read more thrillers from Tess Sharp I know she's written a few and if they're all as good as this one then I'm gonna be very very happy <laughs> and finally I received an arc of Malice by Heather Walter which has this lovely cover once upon a time there was a villain love it so this is a dark queer sleeping beauty retelling and it comes from the point of view of the villain the wicked sorceress and as her, as she falls in love with the sleeping beauty and love it already so in love and a few of my friends have read this already and already loved it so I'm very very excited to pick it up myself it is a lot bigger than I was expecting but it's got quite big writing so I'm hoping that I can just sort of fly through it I'm so excited for this and I'm so grateful I get to request these and receive these oh it's it's good it's good getting all of the good sapphic books this year so yes that is my haul for the first couple months of the year I hope you have enjoyed let me know if you want me to do more hauls I'm happy to if I've got some books on the go I always feel like with hauls I need to have just bought a whole bunch of books or else it doesn't work but I'm trying to get myself out of that mindset because I quite like this format so let me know if you also like it and I'll hopefully do some more and yes thank you very very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon